Hey, welcome back to the channel. So if you're just getting started in editing 4K and you're looking for a computer, you're gonna see a lot of information out there telling you that you need the latest and greatest computer, the fastest processor, the most amount of RAM that you can get. And I'm here to tell you that is not always the case. I have a 2013 iMac back there and I'm gonna show you how well that works with editing 4K. So here we go. All right, now before we get started, let me give you some quick specs on this machine. So like I said, this is a 2013 iMac, and when this came out, this was the top of the line 27 inch iMac, fully specced out. It's got the fourth generation 3.5 gigahertz i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a three terabyte fusion drive, and a GTX 780M card with four gigabytes of video RAM dedicated to that card. This was a very, very expensive machine when it first came out. And I got this just a few weeks ago for 650 bucks. And I think you're gonna be pretty surprised at how well this uh, edits 4K video. So the way I'm structuring this video is I have a single video clip that I'm gonna be using in several pieces of software and I wanna show you various aspects. Now, a lot of these types of videos that you'll see focus on just the rendering, just the exporting of the file out to the final video file, which is an important aspect, but not a lot of them show you how well the, the software handles editing that, that video and scrubbing through the timeline, adding effects, things like that. So I'm gonna take this single video clip and use that same clip in all three pieces of software. And the three pieces of software we're gonna look at are Final Cut Pro, of course, DaVinci Resolve 15, it's the beta version as of the time of this video, and Adobe Premiere CC 2018. I'm also gonna run the Bruce X Benchmark, just so you can see the timing on that. If you don't know what Bruce X Benchmark is, just real quick, it's a short, 5k video with a bunch of processing going on and it's very commonly used to show how quickly your computer will render out a complicated video so with all that in mind let's get started and jump right into final cut pro so this probably won't be a surprise, but Final Cut Pro works beautifully with the 4K footage right off my Lumix G7. It's buttery smooth, scrubbing through the timeline, the playback is smooth, the cutting and adding transitions and effects, color correction, all that stuff works beautifully. And Final Cut Pro is one of the best optimized video editing software available. I was not too surprised about this. What I was surprised about is how well it worked. There was absolutely no slowdowns or hiccups or anything even adding multiple layers to my video. So on the rendering side, I exported this two and a half minute video in both H.264 MP4 and a ProRes MOV. Now the MP4 uh, rendered out in one minute and 44 seconds, that's an average. I ran the export a few times. The average export time was one minute and 44 seconds. And the QuickTime ProRes 422 high quality was two minutes and 17 seconds. So. Uh, the MP4 was a little bit faster, but both of them were under the time of the actual video, which is pretty impressive. All right, so now on to DaVinci Resolve, and I was actually pretty surprised by this one because I have problems with 4K video in DaVinci Resolve on my Monster i7-8700K uh, gaming PC that I build. So I was so surprised that it works so well on this iMac in DaVinci Resolve. The scrubbing is completely smooth. Uh, again, the editing, adding transitions, all that stuff is smooth. The color correction works great. Everything just works beautifully, plays back at full speed, and I never had any problems in DaVinci Resolve on this 2013 iMac. So onto the exporting, and it was actually very, very similar to Final Cut Pro with the same two and a half minute video with the H.264 MP4, I got uh, one minute, 41 seconds average. And then with the MOV ProRes 422 high quality, I got two minutes and 18 seconds. It's pretty much exactly the same as what I was seeing with Final Cut Pro. So this is a very viable option. And the best thing about DaVinci Resolve is it's completely free. You can get the studio version that you have to pay for, but the version that I was testing with in this video is 100% free. So moving on to Adobe Premiere CC 2018, and with this one, I did not have as good an experience as I had with the other two pieces of software. 
I tried it in uh, CUDA and OpenCL and Metal. Didn't really see much of a difference in any of those. I made sure I had the latest drivers, latest CUDA drivers. Everything's up to snuff and uh, it's just not working that well. The scrubbing is really, really bad. Uh, it's, it's not usable if you scrub a lot with your workflow. The playback was a little bit stuttery. Uh, even setting the, the resolution down, I had to set it down to a quarter to get it to, to work well and play back well. Um, the interesting thing was when I did a cut and added a transition and the transition was completely smooth, but scrubbing through the timeline and all that stuff, it was not a very usable experience in, uh, in my opinion. So the exporting in Premiere also wasn't as good as the other two pieces of software. So with the H.264 MP4, we were getting about one minute, 54 seconds. That's not too bad. It's about 10 seconds more than uh, Resolve and Final Cut Pro. But when we went to ProRes, we saw a huge hit, the ProRes 422, high quality. It was an average of about four minutes and 15 seconds. That was definitely the longest out of those pieces of software. So uh, Premiere on this machine is not a great experience and I probably would not recommend it. So running the Bruce X benchmark, I ran it several times and then took an average of all the exports and that average was 44 seconds, which is really not bad considering this machine is five years old. And if you look at the other benchmarks from other people that have run it, it's pretty much right in line uh, where you would expect for a machine of this age. Uh, sure, with a newer machine, you'd get a faster export time, but export is only part of the picture. All right, so there you go. As you can see, this five-year-old iMac handles 4K video editing fantastically in Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, not so much in Adobe Premiere, but the point is you don't necessarily need to get the latest and greatest hardware on the PC side or the Mac side to edit 4K uh, video. You can use an older machine with decent specs that you can get much more affordably these days and edit your 4K on there without having to buy you know, the latest and greatest hardware and build this monster PC or buy, you know, the latest MacBook Pro or iMac to edit th these videos. You can use an older machine to edit it. Sure, the export time might be a little bit longer, but you gotta kind of balance, uh, you know, the extra costs involved in buying a new machine with a little bit extra time it might take you with an older machine. So hopefully you found this uh, useful and informative. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up if you liked the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I love meeting new people on all those platforms and chatting with them. And I will see you in the next video.